I do it online. Hello, Andrew. I see your face is up. Good evening. Good evening. Beautiful. Nice. How many of board? the 44 speaking Afrikaans people do we have on this call? <laughs> We've got nine on. Do you know what? how many Afrikaans people? <laughs> yeah. I want to know how many of the 44 that speak Afrikaans globally are on the call. <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. Four only. Sure. So the other 40 must be somewhere else. South Africa. <laughs> yeah, they must be somewhere else, not on the really important calls that we have. Oh, Charlize Theron. Yes, she really put her foot in it. <laughs> what? Yeah, you know, I didn't see that story. What happened? Oh, uh, she was interviewed by some reporter, and she said there's only about 44 people left in the world that speak Afrikaans, so it's an irrelevant language. <laughs> oh, shame. Yeah, Every language is important. All right, let's give it about another minute and then we can start. We are recording. It's an automatic recording. Hello, Captain. Hello, Andrew. Hello, hello. Hello, Miriam. I'm so glad to be here because usually I'm not at home on Thursday evening. So today I am. So I'm glad to watch live. I usually watch recordings. So That's that good. makes a change. That's good to see you on here. Looks like people are still coming on board. Hi, right, Andrew. It's two minutes past. Let's start. Have fun. Wonderful. What are we? Uh, what are we talking about tonight? <laughs> We're talking about communication. The talking yeah, part. Yeah, about the second part of communication. The talking part. I, I actually this morning I saw a lovely little thing that uh, that popped up on Facebook. And uh, it says, Jesus can turn water into wine, but he can't turn your whining into anything. And then that was a uh, take on Philippians 2.14, do all things without murmuring and dis uh, disputings. And uh, that's really what we need to keep in mind when we are talking, talking to each other, talking to a group, talking to ourselves. Let your words be few. Let your words be wise. Let them not be grounded in folly or foolishness. Let them be words of truth, words of life, words of edification, words that build up and not destroy. Because we are all tossed and given something very, very powerful in this journey that we are on as the gifts that we are as individuals. We all have a massive weapon of mass destruction that has been put in our care. We have to take care of this thing. We have to protect it. We have to guard it. We have to do everything we can with our lives to make sure that this weapon of mass destruction does not get out of hand because it can kill more people and do more harm than the world wars have done. And that weapon of mass destruction is the thing that sits in your mouth, between your two jaws and your two rows of teeth, your tongue. The Bible says that the power of life and death lies in our tongue. We have to choose carefully the words that we speak because, unfortunately, they can never be taken back. Once that word has gone through every filter you possibly have and it is put out into time and space, it gains matter, it gains weight, it gains power, and it has the ability to destroy. So we have to be very, very careful with the words that we choose and the way that we use these words. And unfortunately, in today's modern era, most of our talking, talking has become text we spend more time typing than we actually do talking. And in that, we've lost some of the um, emotion of, or the expression of the spoken word. Because people interpret what you type in a message the way that they are feeling in the moment that they receive that message. So it's not necessarily 
in fullness the truth, what they are reading into what you have written. That's why the, the part of communication we're talking about tonight is talking, the spoken word. And it's so important to use that, use it more often than any other form of communication, than texting or writing or whatever it may be. The only one you need to use more is hearing, the one we spoke about last week, the most important part of communication. So the, one of the first things I said is let your words be few. Don't be, as it says in scripture, like the pagans that stand on the street corner and babble and think that they will be heard in their prayers because of the amount of words that they use. You know, one of the most powerful scriptures in all the texts from beginning to end, the shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. Now that, just those two little lines, hold so much power. Few words, massive power, all right? So very, very important. Let your words be few. It's not necessary to string together massive sentences and construct paragraphs to try and get the point across. It's most important to be honest in your communication, be clear in your communication, and be committed to your communication. If you are going to start speaking to someone or engage with somebody, be committed to that conversation. Spend some time listening, spend some time talking, giving your inputs. Share honestly from the heart make sure you filter it through the mind first and then let those words come out but let your words be few let them be honest and not futile let them be grounded in wisdom and not in folly don't just say something for the sake of say, saying it i was joking about the charlize theron comment that's made its way around the the media today that was just said in absolute foolishness. Why would somebody make a statement like that? It's hurtful. It's hateful. It's disdainful. It does nothing but disrupt and break down and destroy. Why? Why would somebody say something like that? She didn't think about it. It was probably a question posed to her in the middle of an interview. I'm not making excuses for her. I think, you know, you've got to check yourself. Make sure that you filter what comes through here. The fuel that you put into this weapon is absolutely important or vital. Don't put the wrong fuel in. If you start speaking words of destruction and start breaking things down, it's very difficult to build them back up. And like I said, once that word is spoken, once the word has been given weight, once it's been given life because it's come from your mouth, it cannot be altered or changed. It's gone. It's out there, all right? That's why there's this amazing gift called forgiveness, which again is a spoken thing, a communicated thing. We have to remember that we need to... Um, sorry, my inverter started beeping. We have to remember that we need to um, be accountable for the words that we speak and let them always be words of life and not death, all right? It's very... Um, important to focus on it and the, the the spoken word is where everything began in the days of creation god spoke and it was so god said let there be light and there was light god said let us create man in our image and it was done the spoken word holds so much power and i think we lose sight and we lose focus on the value of the words that we have and the importance of the words that we speak, because we just sort of take it for granted, you know, that we are given an endless number of words to, get, to speak in every day, and that we just need to use them, and sometimes we flippantly do that, and we hurt people, and we destroy people, and we break them down. So we need to be listening to the circumstance around us, listening to our heart, filtering things through our mind, processing what needs to be processed, and then let it come forth. Speak those words, words of wisdom, words of encouragement, words of life, words of direction, words of healing, words of constructive ability. These are the things that we need to be focused on as we journey together, as we build each other, as we build our teams, as we build our families. It's so important. Don't be quick to speak. Be quick to listen. Be, it doesn't say in the Bible, be ever speaking. It says, be ever hearing. That's one of the important things. Be ever hearing, not ever speaking. And be in a place when you are speaking, where you speak words of life. 
don't get yourselves caught up in folly. Another awesome scripture in Revelation says that we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The spoken word of your story. Nobody else has your story. Your story is important. Your story is vital. Your story holds power. So keep account of the story in your life. Keep account. Looks like Andrew may have lost signal. Or is it on my side? It looks like we lost Andrew. Uh, something peeped there. I saw him looking to the right. Can we still hear Andrew? Let me call him quickly and find out if he's fine. Mira, I see your name here on the screen. Tell us more about how you talk to people. There's a few filters that we need to use. Um, you know those okay. filters. Yes, but... Um... I know that I need to um, adhere to the scripture which says, let your words be few. Sometimes I talk too much, like many other women. So I think that's a good one to follow. And yeah, but um, yeah, th th there's not much to say after listening to Andrew. He's got such wise words that we can only take them in. There's not much we can say. Comments from anybody else while we wait? No, I just spoke to Andrew. His inverter died. So he's without power. He will hop on if he can get it fixed. Uh, there's a few filters that we use. I, mean, I must admit that you said now that you speak about the filters. But you tell the people mm -hmm. about the filters. No. No, I did not. I leave that part to you. I only spoke about the one, the scripture, which says, let your words be few. And I do know that scripture, but I don't always follow that. Mm -hmm. But um, I do try and speak life. I think mostly I do. Um, I haven't always been like that, but as we get older, we learn. Yeah, one very important filter, when you, before you say something, before you communicate, Ask yourself, is this what I'm going to say true? I frequently warn people that if I tell them I'm going to tell a story to you, they must know it's a lie. That's how I, I can excuse myself from telling jokes because most jokes is just got a lie somewhere ingrained in it. Be careful before you communicate to use your filters. Use a filter of truth. Make sure that it's a truth that you're going to tell somebody. And then also a question that I ask sometimes to myself. Is this going to build up something? Is this going to build up somebody? Is this going to assist somebody to have a better life? So whatever I say, I use that filter. Is it a positive thing that I'm going to say? Very important. And then also... The other side of, is it going to build up somebody? Is it going to maybe break down somebody? Something that I may say to somebody may be good for them. But if somebody else overheard that sentence and three days later they think about it, it's maybe hurtful to them. So be careful who's your audience when you communicate. Is it a single person or is it maybe more than one person? And is what you're going to say applicable to all of them? Right, uh, while Andrews are not on yet, I don't have much more to say about communication. You know how I can communicate straight and forward without lies. Anybody else wants to uh, add on something before we um, open up for a few questions? 
Um, I have, if I may. I learned, I learned a couple of years ago that if I'm in a conflict situation um, or if I've got any challenge to solve, to switch over to another language. In other words, let's say I'm having a discussion or a debate or maybe even an argument with someone. I would actually, because Afrikaans is my mother tongue, I would switch over and I would speak English. The fact that you switch over to another language engages or activates your left brain, which is more of a logical brain, and um, it, it tones down the right brain, which is the more emotional side. So if you're having a discussion or an um, debate, argument, change, switch over to a second language, which is not your your first language. And then the other thing is also if you have got a challenge that you need to solve, um, any anything that's difficult, do it in another language. It's it's I don't know if it fits really in with communication, but um, it certainly does activate your your logical side of your brain, which which um, don't think with emotion. Um, I don't know if that all makes sense. Yeah, there's very true words. If you've got uh, one language that's, that you speak frequently, that you use most of the time, and then a the second language, the moment that you start speaking in another language, you actually start thinking. And then your left brain kicks in because you must now use logic and not feelings. When you speak in your mother tongue, your right brain works because you, you, you put in emotions and you put in feelings and you put in anger and all those type of things. And if you use a different language where you must think about it, activates the left brain. And that then uh, makes you think more before you actually speak out or get the words out of your mouth. Very wise words that, uh, Christina. Anybody else wants to add on something? Go on, there'll be 15 people here. Somebody must have something to say. I will add if no one else will. Yes, carry on. Carry on, Mia. I have a challenge with that one because English is not my mother tongue. And I don't speak Afrikaans. I do understand quite a bit, but I don't. I speak German and I speak Finnish. But if I'm in here in South Africa and I'm having a discussion with someone and the only common language we have is English, then I have a challenge. I like what Christina is saying. I think that's brilliant. But that wouldn't solve my issue. And I'm learning French. Oh, and English is not, it's not your first language, so you're going to have to think when you speak English. No, I don't. No, no. I've lived here for so long that English is my my language. I um no, then you I have to it. think more. Yeah, I have to think more when I speak Finnish, but it's getting better because I'm in contact with the Finnish um, submarine girls uh, every day, basically. And, you know, mm. we talk often, so my Finnish has improved a lot. But English, I don't have to think about when I speak it. And German is also quite easy. But with Afrikaans, I'm... I've been here so long that I should be ashamed of not speaking Afrikaans. So I'm not it's one not of a, the 44 that's difficult language. It. <laughs> it's not a yeah. difficult language. It's quite easy to understand because, because I speak German, but yeah, I mm. haven't tried to learn it. Yeah, German, one Russian, day. all those languages one are very close. You can, if you can start reading, then you understand a lot of things. If you can read German, Afrikaans reading is not a difficult, but to speak it is a, it's a different matter. Yeah, I can actually uh, read Afrikaans quite well. Yeah, reading is easier than than speaking, mm. definitely. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna train you on Afrikaans, and I'll, I'm gonna call you five past nine from now on every morning for seven days, and then we'll speak five minutes in Afrikaans. Okay, <laughs> I'll let you speak and I'll listen. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I don't have time to call you every morning at five past nine. Anybody else wants to add on? Still got a lot of time left. It's only 20 past seven now. Christine, you got your hand up. Unmute yourself. Speak to us, please. 
Uh, yes, I've, I've just unmuted myself. Um, as I listen to this uh, team this evening, I just have a feeling like we are such optimistic people that have come together. And one thing for me I've learned in the past about being optimistic, it's not that bit of confessing positive 24 seven, it's not practical, but I've just learned about optimism um, as a way of de uh, developing a better support system. An optimistic person gets into a space where you develop such a, a support system that is very positive for you. So for me, from the time I joined this group and especially the Thursday evening um, uh, talk, I feel um, I'm among my peers, my, my teammates, my team players. I feel like this is my company. And so I feel I'm optimistic in that sense that I don't know how everything will turn out, but I know that it will turn out okay. Why? Because I'm among people who have created such a positive support system. So I think that's that's my feeling this evening. I'm among people who understand me and the system is so positive that every time I get off this call, I feel like my brain is awake in a different way. Yeah, after I end this call, I always listen to the recording about nine o'clock on a Thursday. Yeah, then you're more motivated. If you go out in life with a positive attitude uh, and a positive spirit, communication is so much easier. Uh, a lot of people go out and they're all grumpy. Not many of you know. I can't properly drive a motor vehicle currently because of issues with my feet. The last time I got in one, I drove into a tree. And sometimes I uh, find out when my landlady is going to town, I get a lift. So the first thing I'm thankful for is somebody can take me to a coffee shop or to go do some shopping. And if you, if you enter a place, if it's a coffee shop or the pick and pay or wherever you do shopping with a positive spirit, it's just so much more fun. Last time I went to pick and pay, I approached a supervisor, one of the pick and pay supervisors, and I uh, used my normal words. I'm going to tell you a story. And I said to her, I'm from a far, farm, far in the northern parts of this country. I only see pick and pay once every six months, and I've got a little list here that I need to, to get together for my trolley. She got three of the packers to do my shopping for me. I was standing in one place talking to her for 12 minutes and the packers collected all my groceries, half a trolley full, and I spent a good 12 minutes talking to the supervisor. And I am dead sure, I don't even have to go back and ask, I am sure she had a very positive life that the rest of that day. And that positivity will carry over in her communication with her people working in a team. That's how you can change not only one, but more than one people, people's lives for one day. And she will remember me next time I get there. That's important. Go out, communicate with a positive spirit. All right, any questions? <clears throat> Let's see, there's something in the chat. Yeah, Christine said many wise words there. Anybody got any questions about communication? Are we all clear? I don't know what Andrew's going to do next week. It looks like he's not coming on. He was sitting in half darkness, so I I wasn't surprised when everything knocked off there. But um, that's how life goes. Any questions from anybody? There's a name flickering here on the screen who's got a question for me. I know that. Are you going to talk or must I call out your name? Silence is golden. Yeah, Christine made a smile. This name is still flickering on my screen, so I'm going to call it out. Michaela, unmute yourself. We've got 10 minutes left. Were you talking to me, Captain? <laughs> Michaela, yes, I'm talking to you. Your name flickered here on my screen in green. Oh, that really? That means you want to talk. 
I yes, really? I work with colors. People, my okay. right eye is blind. My right eye is blind. I see energy with my right eye. So if I close my left eye like this, I look at where the green flickers and it flickered right on your name. Oh, what wow. question okay. do we have for us? Or do you want to share something for us with us? I'm ah, oh, let me think now. Today on, you know, I I periodically go into the chat throughout the day, you know, the different um chats on, on, on Telegram. And in the this week actually, we were kind of challenged as to how to respond um to some of the groups. The one that I was added to, you know, with the win from last week. Thank you so very much. I didn't even say thank you for that. Come to think of it. So thank you. Um, and how we were to respond. And I had two choices because in, in Namibia, we're in a small community. And I do know um, the one legend. I do know him. Well, I, yeah, I've met him many, many, many years ago. And... I had a choice as to how I was going to respond, knowing that he's living in a remote area where he may not necessarily be um, in communication, you know, readily available for communication. But at the same time, also kind of being in the dark because I didn't know what his board looked like before the time, you know. So I had the choice as to whether I was going to get impatient with him and or phone him even and just say, listen, People are looking for you, but you're not responding. Um, or just to be polite about it. And I, I must say that I'm kind of proud because that's one of the things that I've been learning these past few weeks on our motivationals is to be a little bit more patient. And especially tonight, I must say, the message kind of reinforces it. You, you speak about um, the points, you know, the checkpoints that we need to look at. And the one that really stands out for me presently is to ask myself the question, is my response or that which I'm, I'm thinking of in the spur of the moment to say, is it really necessary to say it? So I've been practicing that the last 10 days or so. And this week really was a good test for me. And I must say that I'm quite pleased. I hope that I did pass the test in that I was polite on both my communication with him on WhatsApp and then also on the group, you know, and with the questions that were asked, et cetera. So, yeah, so it's a good, it's a good reminder, you know, the motivationals are really good reminders. I, I don't really have any questions per se, but just wanted to share that, you know, as an encouragement. And what Fistina had to say was, because I do this frequently that I change over because I speak three languages fluently, and I often in conversation, depending of whether I'm in front of a person who's actually Afrikaans speaking or German or English, according to that, I'll handle it. But then depending on the circumstances or if it's a heated discussion or so, then I do tend to um, go to a language in which I, in that moment, can communicate more easily um, or in a more comfortable manner. And it's just so nice to hear someone say that it's actually your brain calming you down. So, and it's true. So thank you so much for sharing that, Christina. I really I appreciate that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that was a good, good feedback on uh, how to talk to people. We had uh, very few issues on the current groups. There's more than 200 of them open, and if these are still busy opening at a huge rate, uh, I must, after the group is open, put the boarding call in. I must still look at new messages. I'm about four days behind with gaps here and there where there's messages that I must still look at. Um, and by the time that we actually work on the board and there's an opening, I don't have time to explain to the legend he's going to confirm the first gift to do a trickle up. And uh, it is amazing that out of just over 100 legends who we asked to confirm the first gift to do trickle up, only one flatly refused. And very easy. All I said is, we will then bypass your board. Let me get screenshots from the other people on the board. I will sponsor them profiles on another board. And we just leave your board behind. He then called me in tears seven minutes later. What am I going to do? I said, I'm not going to work on your board. 
I said it straight and very clearly in the group, without any anger or any emotion. If you can't cooperate to get the builder position filled, I'm not working on your board. I'll take the other five people and give them positions on, on a perpetual board of myself or on a submarine board. He then said, please load the person and I'll confirm. That's how easy communication is. No emotion. Just straightforward logic where you use your left brain. I don't often get emotional. If I scream on a Zoom call, it's a total act. I can guarantee you not once in this whole lifetime on this life cycle was I ever upset with any human. I love humankind too much for that. All right, if there's no more questions, I'm going to close off. Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, we hope Andrew sort out his electricity issue. I know there's load shedding all over the country. Some people said they've got load shedding already or their phones is flat. They can't talk. Can't get on a Zoom call, so be it. The recording will be up. Anything between, depending on the upload speed, 20 to 25 minutes. Have fun. See everybody on the Saturday trading calls. Three calls again, South African time, 11 and 1. And American Eastern Seaboard time, 12 p.m. Have fun. Unmute yourself. Shout bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Please call Emma to speak. Bye. Bye. Yeah, what Emma? Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, bye. Emma is too quiet. Call her next time, Captain. I will call her next time. <laughs>